Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity RPG tutorial series. Now last time out we added a sword for our player to walk around with and be able to kill our enemies, but we need to make it look a little bit better so that it looks like it's actually moving around with our player in the world. So last time out we made the sword be a child of the player, because we wanted to um, be able to move the sword independent of the player basically, but we also want to make sure that we can switch our sword out for other objects in the future. So what we want to do is actually make another child object uh, to put the sword within so that if we switch the sword for say an axe or any other object um, we'll do all the movement on the container that the sword is within that we'll call say weapon um, and whatever movements and rotations will happen on that and then the sword will just react because it's a child of the weapon uh, container the sword will react and move and then if we switch a sword for an axe or anything else that object will be within the weapon holder and that will move the exact same way that we want it to so to do that and we could uh, kind of actually the easiest way to do it is just get our player uh, click on create empty and we'll call this empty we'll call it a uh, weapon like I just said uh, weapon like that and then we'll just drag our sword into the weapon child and we'll make sure that the we the sword is centered exactly within the weapon so we'll go to the X position here and put that to zero and the Y to be zero also and you'll see it move around like that and we want to grab the weapon using our move tool and move it to roughly the right place that we want it uh, and as you can see it's kind of our sword has moved behind our player now. It was in front of him a second ago, but we haven't actually really made any changes. And the reason that's happening is because our player sorting layer is one and our swords sorting layer is one. So normally what we would do is if we set our sorting layer to be two, for example, the sword will appear in front of it and that'll be fine. We can move the sword into the right position. We're actually going to put it out of position now because that'll help us with some animations in a minute. Um, but um, so we normally put our order in there to be higher so that it appears in front of the player or lower if we want it to be behind the player but we're going to leave it at 1 because when we're doing animations we're not able to change the order in the layer so if we just click on the player for a second and go to our animation window which should be active here we go okay so the players move when the player's moving down that's fine we'd want the sword to be in front but when our player is moving up like this we'd want the sword to be in this hand and we want it to be behind the player but when we're doing animations we're not able to change the order in layer here um, it's kind of a strange omission I don't really know why it won't work but there's a very simple workaround for it because we keep our order in layer the same the only way the, that Unity then knows how to position something above or below the player is by the Z position here so if we were to increase the Z position uh, oh, not of the player of the weapon here so if we were to move that up above zero then it'll move behind the player and if we put it below zero it'll move in front of the player it's kind of the opposite to how the the sorting layers works basically uh, which is a little bit confusing but it's once you get the hang of it it's not too bad uh, so I'm just gonna put this back to zero for a second so what we want to do is move the sword uh, using the Z value in front or behind the player just depending on which direction is facing. So now let's actually go and put those animations into place. So we'll start with our player moving down. So we have our, the only bit of animations that we've got going on at the moment is just switching between the sprites. So what we're going to do is animate it so that the weapon moves to the right place on each frame of the animation. So on the first frame here, we know that our weapon wants to be down. We want to have it over his hand, kind of like that. So we want it there. Um, we actually, it, although it would look okay to have his sword positioned like that, we want to have him walking with the sword kind of pointed in front of him. So what we'll do is, on the rotation here, go to the Z value, and we can either click and drag it upwards, or we can just, because we, want, we know we want to point it straight down, We'll set that to 180. Oh, and doing that has revealed uh, a little bit of a strange thing. 
So our weapon... Oh, that was my bad because I moved the sword apparently at some point. Okay, let's just cancel these bits of animations. I'm just going to highlight these two that we just created. I'm going to right click and delete those keys. So now our sword is kind of left here upside down. Turn off the animation. Okay, so apparently what I did a second ago, I moved the sword within the weapon and that's what we don't want to do at all. We want to make sure we're doing any kind of movement on the weapon itself. So I'm just going to set this to zero back into the center where it should be like that and then I can't lock this object can I anything no it's okay okay so we just need to remember to move the weapon and not the sword if we if we move the sword at all it's going to create havoc and problems that we don't need so we'll go we'll go back to square one again we're on our player move down um animation we'll make sure we're on the first frame and on the first frame, we're going to move our weapon to the right position. And we're going to set the rotation by spinning it around like that. And you can see it's actually spinning properly this time. So we set it to 180, so it's pointing down. We just want to make sure we're covering over this little gap here. We don't want we don't have to worry about being too accurate. It's okay for the time being. But okay, so we've got our weapon pointing down like that. If we move to the second frame, we can see the hand doesn't move, so we're okay to keep our sword there like that. Moves to the third frame. Again, the hand doesn't move, so the sword is fine like that. And then on our fourth frame, the hand moves up to there. So what we want to do then is just click and drag that up to there like that. And I just move that a tiny bit over just to cover that little white gap. Okay, so then we've got uh, the first frame where the sword is here and the fourth frame where the sword is here. And that's the only movement we want happening because we've got sprite-based animations. We want it to just go from the first place to the second place but because of the way um, uh, animations work in unity what unity does is it goes okay we've got our first frame here and then we've got our last frame here we'll automatically try and fill in all the gaps so if we go to our second frame we can see the sword has moved up a tiny bit and in our third frame we can see the sword has moved up a tiny bit more so if we just hit play here we can see what we actually get is the sword kind of slowly drifting into place and that just looks completely wrong that's not what we want at all so we'll stop that playing and the way we can fix this is if we highlight uh, by clicking and dragging uh, not not uh, clicking on one and dragging but clicking to the side of one and dragging across and if we right click and hover over both tangents and click on constant so what that'll do is it'll say it'll only basically move straight to a position when it's told to move by uh, one of these little diamond keyframes. So if we hit play, we'll see the sword just goes boop right into position, the same way it works in the sprite animation. That's perfect, that's exactly what we want. And what we want to do as well is do the same thing for our rotation, uh, both tangents and constant. Because when we switch from one rotation to another, we want our sword to click exactly into position. If we don't do that, what will happen is when our player say goes from walking up to walking left, we'll see the sword kind of swing slowly from pointing upwards to or, to pointing towards the left. But what we want is it to instantly snap into the right position. Okay, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, so we need to do basically the same thing now with our other animations. But what actually we won't see it with this animation. Actually, we we'll see it in the next animation. So I'll come back to what I was about to say now in a second. But uh, so we switch to our player move left and now we have our sword kind of pointing up like this in the wrong direction uh, so we're going to click and we're going to drag our weapon again drag it over to here we're going to set the rotation to 90 like that and actually we'll move it one higher we'll put the sword round about there now the problem at the moment is if we're looking at the sword we can see the sword is appearing in front of the player but we and when the player is facing this way the sword is in the right in his right hand so we want the sword to be behind so again as we discussed a little while ago we're going to set the z value of the position to be one so that the sword pops in behind the player and we'll just go through our frames here we can see in the first frame our hand goes forward so we'll move the sword forward to there like that third frame the hand moves back so we'll move it back to there Fourth frame, the hand moves back even further, so we'll move it back again. Okay, so we got our sword going in between our positions, but again, if we hit play now, the sword is kind of 
sliding. It actually looks kind of like a nice little smooth animation, but that's not what we want. We have a sprite based animation, so we need to pop in between places. So again, uh, we're going to click and drag, but this time we're going to select all the position keys and, and the rotation one that we had. So we can just do all of them at once and say both tangents constant. Um, so now if we go back again to the first animation, back here, so we've got our sword here, and just by default at the moment it's appearing in front of the player, but there's nothing really explicitly saying that it should be in front of the player, because it's got, we've got our zero on our z-axis here, which is the exact same as the player, so Unity could, because it hasn't been told exactly what to do, it could just decide to put the sword behind the player. Uh, so what we want to make sure is that Unity knows exactly where the sword should be, which is... Uh, uh, on our weapon position uh, here, here, we want to make sure Z is at minus one, so that it's guaranteed to be in front of the player. And on our our, our other keyframe here, because we didn't set our minus one originally, we need to set it again here. Whereas on the second animation, because we set it at the very first frame, then on the second, third, and fourth frames, it stays at one. Okay, so we'll move to doing our moving right animation. So this again should be relatively straightforward. We'll move our sword into the rough position. Turn it around, so we'll set this to be uh, minus 90 like that. And it looks like it's roughly in the right position there. So we need to make sure again that the Z value is right. So we'll set that to minus one. So when we go through our frames and see where the sword moves, we need to move it back. Then forward again to there, and then finally forward and a little bit up to there. So we see we got our sword moving nicely. Then again, we'll highlight the bottom two rows, go to both tangents, constant. And then we get our player moving up, and we'll do the exact same thing. Get our weapon, move it over to here, like so. Uh, and again, we need to set our Z value to be uh, min no, no, sorry, minus one. We want to set it to one this time so that it goes behind the player. Uh, although the sword is pointing in the direction we wanted to point, we need to make sure that it will go to this position when we switch animations. So we need to actually set the rotation specifically. So what we can do is if we were to type in just zero there like that, it's already zero, so it's not changing anything. So it won't record that in the animation here. So what we need to do is change the Z value to just some random number and then set it back to be zero again. So then it knows that it should be zero here. Okay, so now we'll move the sword. So in the first frame, the hand goes up a little bit. So we'll move it up a little bit like that. Third frame, it goes back down to there. And then fourth frame, it stays in the same position. So that's fine. So again, we'll highlight over them, right click and say, constant. Okay, so that's perfect. So now um, we need to set, we need to do the same thing for our player facing different directions. So it's basically just doing the exact same thing again. But for now we want to just test and make sure that our animations are working properly. So we'll go into our game here. And as you can see, we can now walk around a little bit. We can see the sword is moving around just the way we want them to. Whenever we stop moving, we can see the sword is kind of just floating there, not the way we want it to do at all, because we haven't set any anim animations for that just yet. But we can see as he's walking along, he's actually um, carrying the sword just the way we want. So if we walk into this guy here, nope, we didn't quite catch him. But this guy, oh no, we missed him with the sword. But that's okay, because we're not actually attacking anything. If something happens to run into our sword, it will kill them. But we're not actually trying to attack them at the moment. Okay, so... What we can do now is, yeah, we need to set, uh, just rather quickly, we need to set the sword for when he's facing different directions. So when he's facing down here, we again, what we want to do is move our sword roughly into position, set our Z value to 180 like that, make sure that it's um, above the player, which is minus one, and we'll just move it over ever so like that. And again, we want to make sure that the sword definitely clicks into the right position rather than slowly sliding. So we'll make sure and say both tangents, constant. Uh, no, we don't want to create a new animation. We're going to say player facing left. So this time we move it 
oh we can't actually see the sword is kind of annoying um so we'll do the ro our rotation first set it to that move the sword kind of roughly into position here uh, and we want to make sure it stays behind the player even though it is already there right now so we make sure and set that to one and again we'll make them both tangents constant so for facing right then we have oh no we don't want to move the player we want to move the weapon uh we'll the weapon should be in front of the player this time so we'll say minus one our z rotation should be uh minus 90 and put our sword in our hand oh let's put our sword in our hand like this that's where we put it last time uh if it will just go into place for me there we go perfect and again we'll do the exact same thing we make sure both tangents are constant and then finally we have their player facing up and when the player is facing up we want our weapon over here in this hand and we want to make sure it is uh, no not minus one it is one so it's behind and again we want to make sure that the rotation goes to the right position it or else it'll just stay wherever it was when it, wherever it wanted it to be basically um, and so we want to make sure again put our z value just give it a random value and then hit zero so it stays just exactly the way we want it to. okay so now we should have with all them done we should have when our player's walking around he will stop and he hold the sword in the right position each time so after he walks perfect he's got the sword just the way we want him to perfect so now we can see we've got our sword walk our dude walking around with a sword uh, in our world in a in a fun and interesting way basically <laughs> uh, so yeah so that's the basics of uh, adding a little bit more uh, animation to the player so we we hadn't covered uh, actually moving things in our animator yet but now we can see it's relatively straightforward and you can use the same tools to create whole animations for your game if you wanted your player to like walk to specific areas and stuff like that or you wanted to set up cutscenes and things you could just use the animator to do all of that for you it's quite handy in that way uh, but for now we've we've covered enough of uh, our player moving around where we will of course return to uh, actually attacking things having an animation for attacking and such like that but for now we've got our player moving around and he's got a little bit of defense for when uh, these guys kind of come at him let's see if we can get one of them there we go. We got a, we got a, we got an enemy. We can take care of these guys. So, thanks for watching this episode and I will return soon with some more RPG goodness. Thanks for checking out this episode and if you want even more Games Plus James goodness, make sure you hit those subscribe and like buttons. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook by following the links on screen where you can find out all the latest news about the channel. And if you want to help support the show, check out the Patreon page where you can get exclusive content in return for helping make the channel even better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.